everyone. I recently moved houses again in Singapore and it was a struggle and a half. This is everything I learned during my move in Singapore. Make sure to keep these in mind so you don't struggle like I did. First things first, looking for the house. If you're an Indian and you need to cook, make sure to look in the advertisement if they allow cooking. Light cooking does not mean cooking. By light cooking, they literally mean just boiling. Because most people here eat out, so they would either just bring food back in from outside or just boil some noodles or whatever. So heavy cooking to them means cooking with oil. And if you are cooking any other dish, you will have to use oil. Now this also happens because at least in government housing they have their washing machine and clothes drying area in the kitchen itself which again was weird when I first saw it. Uh, so whatever you cook the smell is going to get in the clothes. Uh, that's why they don't allow cooking usually. Now another thing that really confuses me is the common room, master bedroom, uh, master room or whatever it is. So master means attached with bathroom, common room means this room that I'm in which does not have an attached bathroom so you'll most likely have to share it. Now if you need an attached bathroom I think best and if you can't remember the terms best is to ask this room is attached with bathroom right they might get annoyed but at least you won't be duped at the end. If your room is gonna be a common room uh, the one thing that is good to ask is how many people are you sharing your bathroom with because okay fine out that you have to share the bathroom at least as less people as possible. So right now I'm sharing it with one other girl, so it's the two of us. So it's still fine. But I saw some common rooms where you have to share it with three people. That gets, I mean, there is more possibility of the bathroom being blocked or the bathroom staying dirty because more people are using it. So right now it's just one other girl and we really, I've never had to wait to go to the bathroom, which was what I wanted. Now, another thing which is very bizarre that I found is a lot of the houses might have specific races written that some people only want Chinese people to stay there. Someone only wants Malaysians to stay there. I've never seen an only Indians, otherwise life would be easy, but uh, maybe there are. There are also like some government things where only these kind of people can live in this kind of society. Maybe it's related to that. I don't also, in my previous video about looking for houses in Singapore, I stated some websites and that you can WhatsApp with the agents and all. Now this time, every single person that I messaged, nobody got back to me and that kind of drove me insane because I'm like, I have these houses and I see those houses going away, but you didn't message me in time, so I couldn't tell you I want to see this house you know so that really happens now you really have to bug the agent again and again and again and again or else it's best look for houses listed by the house owners themselves the landlords themselves the housemates themselves like this house was listed by the housemates so I could really get in touch with them fast because they wanted someone in the house or else they have to pay for this room if you go to these Facebook groups so they are they're literally Facebook groups of oh looking for Indian tenants or Indian housemates so you can at least connect with other Indians in Singapore or other young people in Singapore or houses in a similar area so look for Facebook groups that really really helps I actually found so many more options there rather than those websites because I feel like if an agent talks to them uh, they respond rather than a normal person because before this I was uh, looking for houses along with an agent this time I was doing it all by myself oh my god and don't take too long don't think like okay I'm gonna look for the house now think about no the houses go pretty fast so make sure to make your decision as soon as possible get everything done now this was about looking for the house let's talk about actual moving the way people do it here and I think everywhere else is also they hire movers. Now you can either google movers or just check out this app called Carousel. This app has service providers so they'll have cleaners, they'll have uh, movers, packers, everything and some of these movers actually provide you the boxes. Even packers, someone told me that you can even get your stuff packed but I think that's like a bit too much. You can pack yourself because you know how to handle your own stuff but you have these movers that you can look up online, talk to them what size of vehicle you want. Do you want a lorry? Do you want actual truck and then accordingly you can negotiate make sure to negotiate still negotiation always works now I took it by this app called gogo van I know lala move and gogo van 
I love the names. So I looked them up through the app and it was super easy interface. You just look up the size, you put in how many people you need. Now the first time we moved with movers, the guy actually got super annoyed. So you know how we move in India? The previous time we asked for the driver and then I thought my brother could help out move things. I would help out as well because most of the stuff that we had were bags. So I thought we can easily do it. But the guy was actually super pissed that we didn't ask for someone else because apparently I guess here the actual user does not help much so angry that he actually uprooted all my plants because um, in order to just do the work or whatever he lifted my plants not from the pot but from the stem and all my plants were ruined and it was so bad so last time I asked for one person they sent an old uncle this time I asked for two people so they sent me one young person so I don't know how this works there's lots of it just go look up the app and then you see the interface it's super duper easy it's just like ordering food also before leaving the agents here are very strict I talked about this on my Instagram also they're really strict about the cleaning of the house usually when you enter the house also the house will be professionally clean or they'll get it clean somehow uh, so you have to leave it in that condition of course putting anything on the walls is not allowed if you will be putting anything you need to repaint it before you leave so one week before I have to leave the house the agent actually came with a handyman and they inspected my house they literally moved every single tap and everything to see if anything was faulty that I had to get fixed otherwise they'll charge me for it guys they literally shook my shower rod and I didn't even know that's gonna be an issue they shook it and it was loose and they're like this is gonna be like $20 I'm like what if I was gonna ask for a handyman everything here like labor costs a lot in Singapore uh, so I was like okay need to do this myself so I actually looked up so many YouTube videos a quick hack for marks on the wall warm water and toothpaste works like magic I saved up $150 because he was asking me to repaint the entire house I would say though don't blindly listen to whatever they say because my agent expected a lot like for a month he was pushing professional cleaning on me which is going to be expensive like few hundred dollars he said but when I moved into the house I did not get it professionally clean my mom had to do a lot of the cleaning Ten, the landlord's parents came to clean stuff because it was that dirty we actually took photos of the way we received the house uh, so that I can show it to him that this is how dirty we got it and I've left it better so just be satisfied so these are a couple of things that I learned from my moving experience i hope this will help you all uh, and if you're not planning to move in singapore well i hope it gives you some insight into what happens here and yeah make sure to leave me a like and i'll see you in my next video Bye bye